Vesper theory. This is valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. And it's a theory that helps predict the geometry that molecules will take because all electrons are negatively charged. And negative charges try to escape from each other and spread each other as far apart as possible. And so this theory says that molecules will adopt geometry to minimize electron-electron pair repulsion. So valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. The shape of these molecules will be due to their electronic configurations. So if you only have two items coming off the central atom, the farthest they can get apart is 180 degrees. Uh, beryllium is kind of an unusual metal in that it has some covalent properties, and so you form beryllium chloride. And beryllium only has the four electrons, and that's okay, because it's a metal. And it's unusual that it even forms covalent bonds like this. A more common example is carbon dioxide. Each double bond just counts as one electron unit because they're together. So a single bond, a double bond, a triple bond, a lone pair of electrons, they all just count as one electron unit. And so carbon dioxide is linear. The farthest away two electronic groups can get from each other is 180 degrees. With boron trifluoride, now we have three groups and this happens with boron trifluoride and also with aluminum trichloride, AlCl3. Both of these are super useful in chemistry because they only have six valence electrons coming off the central atom. And they want eight, so they'll grab on the two electrons and catalyze the reaction pretty quickly. And so aluminum and boron are great Lewis acids, Lewis catalysts, because they're electron deficient. They want those two extra electrons really badly. But when you only have three electron groups around a central atom, the furthest apart they can get is 120 degrees from each other. The farthest apart four things can get, you might think it's 90 degrees, but you're thinking in two dimensions. In three dimensions, you can get 109.5 degrees away from each other. So let's consider ammonia. We have three bonds to hydrogen and one lone pair. There's four electron groups coming off the nitrogen, so we spread them out in a tetrahedral, tetrahedral arrangement. So we have five valence electrons from nitrogen and one from each hydrogen to give us eight valence electrons. The molecular structure does not take the lone pair into account, and so you just name it based on the structure that you get from the atoms themselves. And that's why water is bent and not linear, because it has those two lone pairs in its Lewis dot structure, and they take up space. And so the two hydrogens are bent from each other. When you name the molecular geometry, you only use the atoms themselves. You don't use the lone pairs, even though the lone pairs were key in forming that shape. Because the only difference between carbon dioxide being linear and water being bent is having two lone pairs coming off the central atom. So again, here we see possibilities. For tetrahedral molecules, trigonal pyramidal molecules, because it looks like a triangle pyramid, a pyramid with a triangle base, or the bent molecules, they all have tetrahedral electronic geometries. They all have four electron groups coming off. But they get different molecular names because you only name them based on the atoms and not the lone pairs. So determining molecular shape, draw a Lewis dot structure for a molecule. Count the electron pairs and arrange them to minimize repulsion. Remember, an electron pair counts as one group. A single bond is one group. A double bond, still one group. Triple bond, still one group. And then we predict the structure. So formaldehyde, we did this Lewis dot structure. There were three electron groups coming off the central atom. The farthest apart three things can get is 120 degrees on one plane, trigonal planar, because it kind of forms a triangle in one plane of space. Phosphine, pH3, this will be just like ammonia, because phosphorus is in group five just like nitrogen. Trigonal pyramidal, notice it's not trigonal planar because it does have this fourth electronic geometry. But we, when you name 
the structure, you only use the atoms. But they're not all on the same plane because that fourth one pushed the other three down. Carbon tetrachloride, tetrahedral. <coughs> all four chlorines coming off the central atom. Is carbon tetrahedral polar or nonpolar? It's hard to visualize in, three di in two dimensions, but it's actually nonpolar. Those four bonds, they all neutralize each other. And so it's just like carbon dioxide, like tug of war. If you have equal but opposing forces, they cancel out. Every single force in there cancels out to have a nonpolar molecule due to their symmetry. What's the molecular geometry for carbon dioxide? We did this one already. It's linear. And so this will also be a nonpolar molecule because even though the carbon-oxygen bond is polar, they exactly cancel out and so you get a nonpolar molecule. And that is the end of chapter 11.